Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Suddenly it's summertime, or close enough at least, and so our thoughts turn to cookouts, camping, and a casual disregard for dangerous UV exposure. Unless you're one of those anti-summer people, because it also brings things like mosquitoes, uncomfortably high temperatures, and perhaps most egregiously, a brief lull in the regular output of tech news so companies can prep for the annual autumnal deluge of launches. But fear not, there are still many goings-ons afoot or a feat, as AMD has revealed even more juicy details about Zen 4, Zen 5, RDNA 3, and RDNA 4. The EU has been doing the Lord's work, if we assume that there is a divine hand guiding us towards a world free of proprietary connectors, and there's even more NVIDIA 40 series GPU rumors to already be cynical about. And for anyone saying, you know, Paul, summer actually doesn't start until June 21st. I know, okay? But for me, summer still starts at the same time it did when I was a kid when school gets out at the beginning of June and summer break begins. Although, I guess now that I'm an adult, I would consider changing that date in my head to June 23rd, because that's when the Steam summer sale starts. Excellent! Today's video was brought to you by the Corsair K70 RGB Pro Mechanical Gaming Keyboard, powered by Axon Processing Technology and Genuine Cherry MX Mechanical Switches. This board packs its aluminum frame with features like dynamic per-key RGB lighting, a detachable USB Type-C cable, durable PBT double-shot keycaps, and IQ software support on both PC and Mac OS. You also get dedicated media keys, a multi-function volume roller, onboard storage for up to 50 profiles and more. So for further details on the Corsair K70 RGB Pro, click the sponsor link in the video description. We begin today with AMD, who shared even more info about next-gen hardware designs at their Financial Analyst Day 2022, which took place on Thursday. Confirmation that three variants of the Zen 4 core, based first on 5 nanometer and then eventually ported to 4 nanometer, are in the works, as well as a trio of Zen 5 options built on 4 nanometer and then eventually 3 nanometer, were displayed across roadmaps to AMD's future with conveniently indeterminate timelines down below. As you can see here, 2019 is in the past, while this arrow clearly represents the relentless and entropic passage of time which will eventually lead us to 2024 when, presumably, our doom shall be realized because, you know, the arrow stops. Before those catastrophic events, though, we'll have probably a year, year and a half to enjoy Ryzen 7000 series CPUs based on Zen 4, which AMD now tells us has about an 8 to 10 percent IPC uplift versus Zen 3. Also, greater than 5.5 gigahertz clock speeds for a more than 15 percent improvement in single-thread performance, which could indicate that AMD is using some conservative math with these predictions. If a flagship 7950X has both 8-10% to better IPC and 5.5 GHz clock speeds, up from about 4.9 GHz on the 5950X, well that should provide more than 20% better performance, but we'll have to wait and see if they over-deliver before determining if they're under-promising here. They also claim 25% better performance per watt and greater than 35% more multi-threaded performance. We also saw clearly identified 3D vCache enhanced versions of both Zen 4 and Zen 5 on the timeline, as well as Threadripper's return, meaning we'll likely see high-end desktop Threadripper 7000 series CPUs. Zen 4 based products should start launching in fall 2022 with the Ryzen 7000 series for desktops, as AMD promised at Computex, with more parts like the Phoenix Point APUs built on 4 nanometer with RDX. DNA 3 graphics coming in 2023. Better APUs are particularly interesting for integration in thin and light laptops, where AMD still maintains a healthy lead in gaming performance over comparable Intel options, and they also showed a Zen 5 based Strix Point design planned with hybrid Zen 4 and Zen 5 cores and RDNA 3 Plus graphics, likely not arriving until 2024 though. So that's a quick rundown of the CPU stuff, but what about graphics? AMD Radeon's next step in GPU design is RDNA 3, now confirmed to be a 5 nanometer based chiplet design with more than 50% better performance per watt versus RDNA 2, according to Team Red. We'll see if these bold claims stand up to scrutiny when Navi 3X GPUs launch later in 2022, providing us with a first look at mass produced GPUs using chiplet packaging technology. We're still assuming those will be dubbed the Radeon RX 7000 series, and beyond that, we even have our first official glimpse 
triumphs of RDNA 3's successor, RDNA 4, which will power Navi 4X-based GPUs and is built on a node so advanced they don't even have a name for it yet. Actually, they're probably just not sure. Intel and Apple supposedly used large piles of cash to reserve all of TSMC's initial 3 nanometer capacity, so AMD might be having a hard time just locking in fab production time for their upcoming chips. So what will presumably be the Radeon RX 8000 series still has an air of mystery about it, although we at least know that it's an official thing. And for those who might doubt that any of this stuff is true, consider this image, a Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 series CPU delidded by an overclocker. Or at least, here's the lid, or the IHS. Remember, AMD is going with an LGA socket for AM5, and since this image went public Tuesday, admirers have noticed the healthy thickness of the heat spreader, the substantial amount of real estate that the IO die takes up, and how the two Zen 4 CCDs are cozied up together right at the edge. Might this affect cooling efficiency if one side of the unit is hotter than the other? Is the IHS that thick so they could maintain backwards compatibility with socket AM4 coolers? And if so, is it an ideal solution? Does it kind of look like a dead spider if you really stretch your imagination a bit? All those questions are punctuated with a question mark, which makes them questions. Speaking of questionable things, NVIDIA appears to also have new GPUs in the works, and while official news on them is still pretty limited, there are plenty of developments if you trust Twitter leaker Copite7Kimi. First, the 4090 Ti, if it exists, might also exist with a Founders Edition or Reference Design triple fan cooler. Not this one here, this is just a Photoshop job done by videocards.com, but the cooler would also take up four slots, a solution used by many RTX 3090 Ti designs. This would make some sense if a full-fat ADA AD102 GPU has a 600-watt power draw, as has been rumored for some time, dissipating that much heat with two fans is somewhat limited by the laws of physics. Even cards that are supposed to be somewhat more reasonable, like the RTX 4080, successor to the RTX 3080, could have bumped up power envelopes, as Kimi claims it will have a 420-watt board power, up from 320 watts with the 30 series. Even the RTX 4070 could be in the 300 to 400 watt range, and while gamers will often overlook increased power draw and heat output if it's traded for big performance games and it can be cooled somewhat effectively, this could mean current PC owners looking to upgrade their GPU only might not be able to get by with just a 550 or 650 watt power supply. With that in mind, some rumors of a mid-summer July launch for the RTX 40 series seem to have quieted down, with the expected debut now being August to September for the 4090, September to October for the 4080, and October to November for the 4070, with the 4060 coming in early 2023. Hopefully by then, the used market will be so flooded with dirt cheap used 30 series cards that we can pretty much ignore the 40 series for a year or two. Kind of like we did with the 30 series. Speaking of things I wish I could ignore, Apple's proprietary connectors are not long for this world, it would seem, after the EU provisionally approved a plan that would force all manufacturers to use a standard connector on Tuesday. The chosen connector is USB-C for now, although it could be changed in the future as technology progresses, and it covers 15 types of devices, including phones, tablets, e-readers, digital cameras, headsets, and video game consoles. Manufacturers must comply by fall 2024, and Apple, despite kicking and screaming all the way, has apparently already been working on iPhones with USB-C connectors to meet the new standard. The EU is a massive and substantial market on the global scale, so this will likely cause Apple to drop the Lightning connector completely, and while there are certainly ideological arguments to be made about the whole thing, personally, I think the e-waste reduction and the reuse cases introduced here far outweigh Apple's complaints about stifling innovation. Besides, in a world of arguments over bubble colors and text messages, it's something that can maybe bring people together. Apple and Android users living together in harmony, sharing charging cables, looking deeply into each other's eyes. There's a brief and palpable moment of sexual tension, and then, then they just start making out like mad. Welcome to the future. Speaking of a bit of foreplay, I've teased you long enough. It's time to drop those tech briefs. Ethereum developers have also been teasing us for far too long with promises of the merge, when the world's second largest cryptocurrency by market cap will switch from the tired and archaic proof of work mechanic that sucks the GPU market dry to the glorious future of proof of stake, which works differently and I don't really care how, it just means no more GPU farms buying up all the RTX cards so there's none left for gamers. On Wednesday, another milestone in the journey towards the merge was reached as ETH's oldest test net called Ropston, which closely mirrors the Ethereum 
mainnet successfully merged its proof of work execution layer with the proof of stake beacon chain. Dev coordinator Tim Bako called it an instantaneous smooth rollout and said, I can see it happening in the same way for the mainnet. So while there is still more work to be done, prospects look pretty good for a Q3 or Q4 2022 merge, which is the current ETA on the official ETH website. Good news for most of us, bad news for GPU mining operations. Speaking of good news for most of us and bad news for crypto miners, New York has passed a moratorium to prevent fossil fuel plants from being spun back up simply to power crypto mining operations, a thing that happens more often than you might think. Often enough that the Blockchain Association, a crypto industry lobbying group, yes, cryptocurrency has lobbying groups, spent millions of dollars circulating disinformation and attempting to kill the bill. Despite those efforts, the bill was passed by the state Senate in a 36 to 27 vote last week and now only needs the governor's signature. The moratorium would last two years and is the first such legislation in the US. So the next time a cryptocurrency fanatic tries to convince you that it's all mined with renewable energy, remind them of this story. Speaking of things we're all getting pretty tired of, booting a PC from a mechanical drive. It sucks, and Microsoft agrees. According to OEMs they do business with, Microsoft is pushing system integrators to drop hard drives as primary storage, or boot drives, by 2023. Microsoft did not officially comment on the move, and timelines from OEMs seem inconsistent, but the only downside seems to be that super budget rigs would be forced to ship with either a 256 gig SSD or a cost bump to accommodate a 512 gig unit. Either way, when it comes to PCs in 2023, it definitely sounds like Microsoft would like mechanical hard drives to take a back seat, like me and your mom the night you were conceived. <laughs> Speaking of bringing new life into the world, a fledgling GPU manufacturer has just spread its wings, or hooves, with the launch of a handful of mid-range Radeon RX 6000 SKUs, an RX 6400, RX 6500 XT, RX 6600, and RX 6560 XT. The company is called Soonfoles. Yes, Soonfoles. And while none of the cards they made feature RGB, they've still emblazoned their retail box with a dazzling star pony, which is obviously a sign of superior build quality and design. But perhaps more importantly, we now have an answer to that eternal existential question. When foals? Soon foals. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and I'm happy to be back, so I hope you liked it. And if you did, click that like button. Your feedback is also always welcome too, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested, and you can check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. And I actually have a pretty huge announcement for this coming week, so if you're not subscribed, it is highly recommended. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.